Hello, everybody. All right, we're getting started here. Really excited here to do um, my second stream. So hopefully this one will go better than the others. But yeah. Welcome to my channel. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump in here real quick. Um, today we're gonna be looking at mono white humans, which I've been using for ladder, and it's uh, it's been doing great. And so I did make some changes. I want to give a big shout out to one of my viewers, Dana Duck. I really appreciate you. I have made the changes here and added in two copies of Elspeth Smite just to kind of mirror the changes that you made, and I really like it actually. It's really great. So going to be excited to see how that kind of does on ladder here today. But currently we are at, let's see, 456 Mythic. And so going to try to make sort of a final push here for the uh, the last couple days of the month. Um, so before we get into it, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you um, like my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much for returning and giving me your support. It really does mean the world to me. Um, I do also want to give a big shout out here again to my first uh, member, Kibo. So thank you so much for being my first member. It's a huge, huge honor to have you be a member of my channel. And I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate you. Um, also, if anyone else is considering becoming a member, uh, you can do so. And here is how. So if you go to one of my videos, you can just go ahead and click join to become a member. I've added a new level, which is just $1.99 a month to get um, access to my, my early content as soon as it comes out before it's posted. And then there's a couple other levels where you get shout outs and some other perks. So um, if you do want to help the channel, but you can't afford to become a member, um, you can also go ahead and click right here on the super thanks to tip me one time if you would like to, and that's another way you can help. I really appreciate it. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, just wanna make sure that uh, the stream is up and running. Hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully everybody can see it here. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm also going to have the deck list um, posted here in the description. It's going to be on both untapped.gg as well as moxfield.com. And then in addition, I'm going to have a link to all of my playlists for all of my standard stuff, all of um, my drafts, my collab drafts. So you can check all of that out here in the description as well. But right now we're just going to go ahead and jump in. I hope everybody's having a great day here so far. So yeah, very excited. All right, opening hand looks great. Happy to keep. And let's see what they've got. All right, so up against Boros Convoke, most likely. Here, we're just going to hold the march just so in case they happen to have Gleeful Demolition, we'll be ready for it. Looks like they don't have <clears throat> a red source, so we'll just hang on to that for now. And we can go ahead and lead out here with Thalia, set ourselves up for a good turn three with Adeline. Yeah, reinforcements does not surprise me here. There's the red source. Although they didn't have Gleeful Demolition, so that's good to know. They probably do have Knight Errant, though, I'm guessing. Yeah, there's the Knight Errant. I've seen a lot of copies of this deck starting to run the... Um, 
the one mana, I think it's like the one one flying fairy, forget the, I think nurturing fairy I want to say, is really, really good because you can uh, replay and get extra value out of both Knight Errant of Eos, Imidane's Recruiter, it's really powerful. Okay, so they have an unbelievable opening here. Um, I think, yeah, we're just going to run out Adeline here, try to withstand the beating. Um, if they play Recruiter next turn, let's see, they're going to be, we can use, put this on Recruiter, and Adeline, I guess, can block like the Warden, um, maybe. And they'll be hitting for... 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. So not quite lethal. But I think it's the best thing we've got right now. This is definitely a super rough hand. Yeah, War Leader's Call is going to be pretty good too. So I think their plan here is just to kind of soften us up a little bit with the Warden and then set up for the lethal next turn. We really can't take 10, and we do also want to make it easier to cast our stuff. So I think we're just going to chump here with Dahlia. Okay. Now. I guess we can attack. Um, if they decide to block, we can smite plus Iganjo. And then. We still die next turn to Recruiter. Um, we can march. Let's see. I guess we could march for three and march for one. So get rid of Warden plus uh, War Leader's Call. That'll make this a four or five. Yeah, I guess let's start by marching for three here. Gonna have to get rid of the Knight Errant, unfortunately. Now we can march for one on the Warden. Do we still just die to Imidans? I think we might still just die here. Um, Yeah, I guess if they just play it out, I suppose we block here, we take 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. We don't die. We do chump, but we don't die. Still, it's going to be almost impossible to come back from this. If they have, like, even a one drop, then we're dead. I mean, if they just want to attack for four, I think we just let it come through. It's We can't really afford to chump, unfortunately. Okay, and they're going for the big play there. So we could attack here with Adeline and then replay Adeline if needed and then hold up Elspeth's smite. I think we're still just super dead to Recruiter, but you never know. Okay, so now I guess we could smite the um, smite the knight here and then still have Iganjo. Although we'll have that next turn too, so there's really no reason to just use it now. I guess we save one of our creatures, so it's kind of the same. Yeah, 
Yeah, and they've got an extra 1-1. One, one. That's, that's definitely going to do it. Because we can basically block three things, but they're still going to be pushing 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yeah, that's going to do it, unfortunately. We tried a valiant effort there to stay in it, but unfortunately didn't quite work. Um, let's see. Okay, so. Yeah, I think the stream is live here. Uh, we had kind of an audio issue yet yesterday, but um, looks like the stream is still going, so hopefully people will see it. Once I kind of figure out my schedule, I might be able to try to set up like a, maybe a more like a, even possibly a regular streaming schedule. We'll have to wait and see, but um, very excited to be doing it and getting it all set up. Um, yeah, opening hand looks fine. I think since we have no two drop, we can hold off on March here. Okay, um, I think. We could wait and see what they do. I think we can just march here, though. It's fine. Just kind of slow them down a little bit. Otherwise, we could just pass. Yeah, I guess we'll pass. Okay, that's a card I definitely want to exile. That has much higher potential. Now we can set up with Adeline and then hopefully can get uh, Brutal Cathar going. So this could be, I guess, just mono red, or it's possible that it's like the uh, the new Boros deck that just pumps. Yeah, definitely looking like, I guess, maybe just a more mono red version, but still very scary, powerful deck. Very happy to uh, get Brutal Cathar going, get that Picnic Ruiner out of here. Anything that can effectively help them like double is just, we want to get rid of it ASAP. the ancestral anger is good lord <laughs> um okay so we have to basically give them back their picnic ruiner because we can't just chump i suppose we could just chump here and then take nine go to one that just seems really really worrisome though um otherwise we could double block but then they get back their picnic ruiner no, you know, I think we actually just go to one. I think that it's so dangerous giving them the, the Ruiner back that we just have to drop down to one here. 
and then just hope to draw enough cards to kind of get ourselves out of this. I suppose the other thing we could have done here is we could have just not played this and let this flip. That actually might have been better. Um, now we do have both two extra blockers, which is kind of nice. If they have any way to give these trample, I think we're probably just done. But I think maybe we start getting in with Brutal Cathar. Scamp is pretty nasty. We need to find a way to either remove that or to um, <laughs> or to gain some life. Okay, is that all four? That is all four ancestral angers. Yeah, that's probably just gonna do it right there, unfortunately. Well, so much for that. But I think you know, holding back the brutal Cathar really wasn't gonna help us too much. Yeah, stringing all the Ancestral Angers was pretty nasty. Let's see if we can pick up some wins. <clears throat> By the way, I'd be excited to know... Um, <clears throat> which decks you kind of you guys are kind of interested in seeing i know that there was um <clears throat> one of my viewers who wanted to see like one of the decks from the pro tour could be kind of fun like i think it was um one of the control decks maybe i'm typically more of an aggro player but i don't mind trying out decks every once in a while all right against amir let's go for scrub first And then I think we just want to get these two going. Just because we do have four mana in hand and there's a chance we can get adversary going. Hey there, Saya. How are you doing? Thanks so much for stopping by the stream. I really appreciate you. It's so nice to be able to see my viewers here. So thank you for being here. Yeah, we just kind of took sort of a pretty brutal pummeling from a couple decks here. An all-in pump strategy and Boris Convoke can both have really nasty draws. <clears throat> but I think, in general, this deck is still doing pretty well. So the question is here, are they running Path of Peril? And if they are, hopefully they haven't got it. But I think I'm going to go for Adversary, just because next turn I can start drawing cards. So it looks a little bit strange playing this for two when I have four mana coming, but... I think just going for value here is going to help. And that was a really nice pickup. Um, now, yeah, I want, to, I want to keep the officer alive if at all possible. But I think we can go Adeline here and then just um, use like adversary plus smite. So let's just attack with the adversary here. They could have a board wipe, which would be really nasty if it hit right now. But yeah, I suppose if they have like um, deadly cover up. Okay, thankfully no deadly cover up. <laughs> that is a good one. So I think I still want to hold back with the officer just because the potential value there is worth a lot. But I think we can start pushing in with... 
Adeline plus some one ones. And if we trade off Adeline, that's okay. Now, if they do block one of our one ones, we're gonna to wanna to put a stop on damage just to make sure that the damage hits before we Eganjo in case they've got like cut down or something like that. So this looks like it could work. And now we can just start uh, drawing here. I think I'm gonna hold until their turn. I don't know that I'd wanna play another one drop out into this field. Just in case they do draw their deadly cover up, which is super likely. <laughs> okay, there's the uh, Alcazats, which is pretty good. Luckily, we've got Niganjo ready. That's a really nice pickup. Um, we're gonna want to start holding lands just because if we take this thing down, they're gonna be able to like use it again essentially um although i guess we could keep searching let's see let's start with copper coat all right we've got the ganjo play So they do get a bat out of the deal, but at least we can push some damage here. Um, and let's hold the land at this point. Like I know we could use it for officer, but we wanna try to make it a little more difficult for them to use Temple of the Dead, right? Hmm. Although I guess they're, they're gonna have, they can still do it since if we have one card or, if, or zero cards. So maybe we just play the land out actually, come to think of it just so we can really leverage this um, officer as much as possible. Because it comes back in tapped, I think, right? Yeah, tapped. By the way, I would love to know, like, um, what you guys think of um, draft videos, because I really enjoy draft. So if you guys are liking those also, I would love to make more of them. All right, let's see if we can find something else. We're not worried about counters right now, so let's make sure we have some white mana open. We could find like another copper coat. Yeah, that'd be perfect. So even if they triple block here, let's see, block, block, block. We're still pushing six, which feels pretty good. Um, this does mean that we're basically throwing our officer into their bat. Cause they go like they block here here and here maybe i think it's still worth it because then we can fly over for the win hopefully it's a pretty crazy attack but i think it's i think it is the move A lot of it's gonna come down to this Elspeth smite. Okay, that's a beating. So if we can if we can get like March off the top, we can pull this one out. Actually that'll do it too. That's awesome. Okay, so now we just all in. Um and then we actually, I suppose if they block both, we don't quite win here. Oh well. But it does at least force blocks on the veteran. The 
I get to stay at one, unfortunately. Oh, and I guess they, yeah, if they don't block veteran, that works too. Um, but I think we still do it. We're definitely going to need some more action off the top here. But yeah, they've got a ton of value coming here. Maybe it was a little bit too too greedy to try to push. But I think that, um, yeah, I guess it just depends how much removal they have. So here we could try to get rid of the Preacher. Um, Alcazatz is going to be a huge problem, obviously. If they have removal, I think we're dead either way. So if we go for Preacher... does give us a better attack. They block here and then take three if they assuming they have nothing. Otherwise we could just go for the the token just to prevent the life gain this turn. But they're getting so much here off Alcazats. Yeah, I think we go for it. Question here is what is our target? Because we could try to trade with Preacher and that wouldn't be that wouldn't be terrible, but I think having Adeline is super useful. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for the Preacher. It's it's kinda like the biggest win reward play, and it's it's unlikely to work, but I think it's gives us the best outcome. This way, even if they have removal for Brutal Cathar, we still have a four power Adeline. They'll need like two pieces of removal to blow us out. Well, that's, that's really encouraging. I mean, no removal is amazing. Okay, Ganjo is pretty good. We're definitely on the ropes right now. So if we attack in with everyone, what happens? They probably try to block Preacher to Adeline, Shieldra to something else. We could let this trade happen and use Iganjo on Shieldra to finish it and then have Brutal Cathar, Cathar flip. We ideally want to use it on Alcazats, but um, if they just let it come through, they could attack back for quite a bit next turn. I think they have to respect the Adeline attack, though.
Yeah, they probably feel like blocking or losing shield is the only way they lose. Do we want to let this trade happen? Um, because using this on Alcazats is pretty good. But I think we want to try to take it with Brutal Cathar, so I think we actually do want to use it here. What we could really use is like adversary off the top. That would be amazing. Whew, that's not gonna do it. Um, yeah, so I think we're pretty much dead here. They just kill us in the air. Hitting them for 14 is super unlikely. Well, we tried. The Alcazats was just a little bit too much to handle. I think it would have taken a lot though. Like they basically would have needed to not draw any removal and have us get adversary to try to win there, which is pretty unlikely. And then all the card draw plus shielded is just super nasty this for this match. That's going to do it here, unfortunately. Whew, okay. Kind of a tough string of beats here. Let's see if we can get a win. <laughs> I don't know if we'll hit uh, rank one mythic here this month, but at least being in the top 1200 would be nice. Um, kind of an interesting keep here. I think we do keep it, even though we have a double E Ganjo. Like, we have some stuff to do early. I think there's enough that we can do here to make it worth it. Because, like, we could potentially set up a turn where we could go, like, Knight Errant off of the two mana that we float for one turn. And it hurts to not be able to fully curve out here. Um, we could try to get down adversary this turn. That's another option. Or we could just go for like the safer officer. The problem is if we go for officer, we still are not in range of doing Knight Errant the following turn. And we don't necessarily need three mana. So I think I'm maybe just going to go for the adversary play here. A little bit controversial, but we'll see how it pans out. We'll be happy to race you here. Okay, that's great. We really needed that. So now let's set up Thalia. I 
And actually, this is great, because now we can go for a Knight Errant next turn. Oh yeah, this is perfect. I think we might finally be able to get a win here, <laughs> hopefully. Wow, that's some gas. Um, I guess we could draw into more land for adversary. I think I'm just gonna go, like Adeline is super good, right? I want all these cards. I think I'm just going to go for Adeline plus um, another Copper Coat. It's possible that going for like Brutal Cathar there might have been right though, just in case they have something that we just absolutely can't deal with. Okay, well, there, there's the Brutal Cathar. Um, I still think it's better to play Copper Coat here, even over Adeline. And now we just push for a lot. Yeah, since we've got double copper coat, like they can't even target the adversary. Pretty sure that's going to do it. I guess they could use. They had like play with fire, maybe. No, they couldn't even target with play with fire. All right, got a win. Nice. <laughs> Feels good. Out of curiosity, um, what uh, what time zone are you in, Saya? I think I had like uh, someone from Australia the other day, so all kinds of different time zones. It's it's so neat to be able to have viewers from all over the world. Okay, yeah, this hand looks great. So we're probably just walking into play with fire here, but I think we just want to get the cards on the table. So if they've got it, they've got it. Oh wow, yeah, hey Danny Duke, how you doing? By the way, just a huge thank you. Um, I adopted your playlist here, so I really appreciate you. I put in the two Elf's Best Smites, they've been great. So I wanna thank you so much for, for your innovation there. And Blitz Gaming, nice to see you there. Appreciate you guys. Wow, yeah, different times all over. I might try to find out, like, um, maybe do some, you know, different potential times for, for streams just to make it easier for everybody. Um, okay, so let's let's float the mana here. Yeah, no, you're an excellent player, by the way. It's so nice to see on ladder. It's always fun to, to see viewers, but I appreciate you. Yeah, let's just get uh, Adeline going here. 
and then hopefully can survive to go for copper coat. That's an interesting one, scorching shot. Yeah, I suppose it makes sense. There are times that I definitely, it, it feels a little rough to have four Eganjos, <laughs> but I think overall I do like having four, just having access to sort of more interaction. Um, I have not tried the top eight finalist. Um, is there like a, like, you mean like a deck list? What are you, what are you talking about Blitz Gaming? Let's see, we're at 12. I think we got to trade here, or at least try to. If they have the um, Monstrous Rage, I think we just have to deal with it. Can't just take it. Oof, man, no land is rough. It's possible that maybe it would be right to run like three copies of Ganjo, but again, having access to the fourth one is does feel really good. All right, I'm gonna hop out for a second here to see if I can chat real quick. I can't chat while I'm in the game, so let's see if I can pull it up. Yeah, overall, this has been a super fun climb this month. Um, I would also, I'd love to do more drafting. And I've been just like watching most of Paul Chion's videos. I just, I love his draft videos. So, oh, right. Yeah, the Pro Tour. Yep. I didn't, I actually didn't have a chance to see any of the coverage. So hopefully it was, it was great. <laughs> Did you guys get a chance to watch it? Actually, let me just double check here. Okay. So they're uh, they're representing reinforcements here. I think we just want to get adversary down, even if we don't attack with it. Although it might be right to try to hold March here instead. We could potentially also just play the Aganjo here and that way have access to both Smite and March if we need both. Now I think I'm just gonna play the Foundry, give ourselves access to March. Because I think just playing the adversary here isn't quite good enough. Um, and I would be willing to trade with one of their 1-1s one right now, just to slow them down. So I think this would actually be okay for them to, if I if they block with a 1-1, one, one, I'm fine with it. This just slows them down from getting access to their Knight Errant. Yeah, I think we're okay with that trade. And then we'll just so yeah, because now they can't play Knight Errant next turn. We could hold for March, otherwise we could just play out maybe like the Veteran here, that way we can have an attacker from Adeline. You know what, I think I'm gonna do that. This way we know that they can't go for Knight Errant and we can get Adeline going next turn. All right, so now, yeah, I think it's still Adeline here. 
I guess they we we really can't stop them from going night errant next turn, so that's just gonna happen. And if they want to trade with Bat, I'm also fine with that. Okay, this is kind of wild. They're just sort of trading everything here. Yeah, I was a bit shocked for them trading their Evangelist that easily. Double Evangelist is pretty sweet, but so is Elspeth Smite. I mean, this is going to be an awesome potential blowout here. Um, okay, so let's go for the Vanguard, leaving open Smite plus uh, March. Yeah, I think we want to do it that way. We also have access to Iganja this way as well. Can we get the double block blowout <laughs> is the question. I guess if they try to go for like Imidane's Recruiter next turn, we can just march in response on one of the Evangelists. That's probably what they're trying to do, I would imagine. So if they just attack right now, Three, six, nine. And get rid of these two. It's not enough. I think we just look, see what happens here. If they want to attack, go for it. Yeah, I think we just take this and try to be aggressive with our removal. Do we want to march end of turn? So like we could we could march here for um to get rid of Elspeth's smite and then or I suppose we could march on adversary, but I think adversary next turn is really good. So if we march for smite, then we'll have one of the evangelists down. I think that's actually worth it here. Although I have no idea what they're holding here. Yeah, I guess that's going to be enough. Nice. Like probably reinforcements maybe. Maybe like reinforcements plus Iganjo. That's all I can think of. So yeah, maybe trying out some of the uh, the Pro Tour decks could be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just let me know what you guys would like to see also. I uh, I had a lot of fun doing some of the collabs, drafting with uh, ESMTG, and collabs definitely seemed like a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys had a chance to see those or if you enjoyed those, but would love to get your feedback. Okay, against Orzov, potentially Esper. We probably want to have Vanguard on two. So I think here we probably go for Skrald turn one instead of Veteran. Just because the interaction is going to be a little bit more important. Like if we had Knight Errant in our hand, 
probably go with veteran since we were planning to convoke out. But since we don't, now we can fight through their counter spells. And I think just leave Skrelm up. That's awesome. Good for you, Danny Duke. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, I actually, like, I think the two drafts that I've done, um, there's been another draft that I've done with Golgari and went 7-1. Um, and one. Golgari's really good. <laughs> I, I think, basically, yeah, green is just such a powerful color. Com I mean, just that color by itself is so powerful. Like, their rares are just out of control. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, I would like that. Um, yeah, maybe I should do, like, I wonder. Find out, like, when everybody is free or, like, what's, you know, good time for them. Definitely, I'll keep that in mind. That's a, that's a great idea. Okay, let's do... If we get him to walk into Smite, it's pretty great. But I also want to play Adeline, so I'm not sure. I guess we could attack and then play Adeline, even though that's kind of a weird ordering. I think that's how I want to do it. Yeah, they're not going to fall for it. That's fine. FNM for viewers. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> that would be cool. Ooh, Rafine is kind of a beating here. I think we trade. I mean, I guess we like we lose the attack off of Adeline, but we've got a replacement Adeline. And this skitter is gonna be super annoying. I don't know if I'm crazy, but I think we I think we just trade here. Cause that's like a lot of damage to be taking too. Yeah, so smite we don't It's another one of those situations where I kinda wanna like attack first and then play Adeline. So let's do that. Again, super obvious here. <laughs> but you never know, they might block. Yeah, Rafine is just such a nasty card. There also like there's a decent chance that they just have Iganjo here. There's not a lot we can do to play around it, unfortunately. So I think we might have to take it. Because, um, yeah, if we block, they can Iganjo for two, pay the extra one. I think that's the only way we lose this. Well, there's several ways we lose the game, but that's definitely probably one of them. <sighs> yeah, I think we just take it here. Although I suppose we could actually block with the... Um, I think we're fine making this trade. I 
Yeah, I'm not sure if it was right because, like, I mean, like they could still have. They'll still have um, Iganjo on their turn also. Sort of no playing around it. I suppose given that, it might have made more sense to just go for the block and just sort of fight through it. I guess virtue here, interesting. So their plan is probably just like build an enormous bat. You know, I wonder if I should have just uh, used Scrub there like before they could block, that might've been better. I mean, it opens up them just killing Adeline. So I don't know what's right. But yeah, I think kind of in hindsight, maybe just trying to get rid of their rats because they're getting a lot of extra value here from them. And if they've got the Aganja, then they've got it. Cut down is a thing. So here I think I just double block their 1-1, one, one, just in case they get rid of one of them. These things are clerics, right? Hey there, Gagoo. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. Yeah, welcome to the stream. We're in kind of a rough spot here against uh, Esper Midrange. I had a uh, questionable play a little bit earlier in the game. <laughs> but if we can get some removal off the top, we can maybe still turn it around. The Rafine is doing a ton of work, though. Okay, that was a super nice top deck. Wow. Unfortunately, we're going to need more than just that. But uh, it's a good start. We have a decent amount of removal. Um, I guess we could really go for either maybe like one of the Brutal Cathars or possibly Knight Errant of Eos. Yeah, we can't really push here, unfortunately. Yeah, this Rafine is just taking over the game. Oof. Do we have to block here? Um, yeah, I think we probably should block. Try to buy ourselves a little bit of time. Okay, that was the card we needed. So if we get rid of their Deep Cavern Bat, we get back the Elspeth Smite, which admittedly is not gonna do everything, but it's certainly something here. Do we have enough mana to do all of it? 
So we got to pay five. Or we got to pay four for the march. We don't have enough for the ward cost, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a beating. I don't think we want to hold. I think we just want to do it main phase here. So we could push for a little bit of damage, but they would be able to safely block with Rafine. They could take out our adversary. Maybe we push with these three, and like they can kill the Thalia, but then we could potentially get our Flyer. I think that's actually probably worth it. We're probably still just dead here to the uh, to the flyers. So I think kind of we maybe had a chance earlier in the game if we were a little bit more bold with our Adeline. That is most likely gonna do it. Yeah, Esper is super rough. Okay. All right, and I actually got to get going, guys. It was going to be a short stream today, but thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I appreciate you guys so much. So hopefully we'll do a little bit more climbing here. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's I know it's late for you guys anyways, and I definitely want to send you off right. So we'll do the sort of outro music here. And remember, guys, you are awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you so much again, guys. You guys are amazing.